hello friends welcome you to my channel so in our last video we have seen multibus cpu organization so before that we have completed single bus cpu organization now we'll start with our hardwired control unit design so basically see what is the job of your control unit control unit basic job is to generate the control signals right so in uh, to execute instructions the processor must have some means of generating the control signals that are required whenever that are required in a proper sequence so that we can perform some operation so see to generate these control signals there are two types of um, control units are there two categories are there one a category based on hardware approach that is called as hardwired control unit and the other one is based on software approach called as micro programmed control unit right so there are two categories of control unit design is there today first we will see hardwired control unit design so see hardwired control unit can operate at high speed but we but with little flexibility so these are some uh, characteristics and we will be proving it that how they are like this that means hardware is faster and it is little flexible the statement you will understand only when the complete hardware control unit is discussed right so before discussing this see basic thing is we need to execute some instruction when we execute some instruction we need to generate the control signals who will generate that control unit will generate that so what we have seen in our single bus cpu organization suppose this was the instruction to execute this instruction we require these signals already we know the story right these signals are known to us so these signals we need to generate right that means what what i am trying to explain you that here our aim is to generate the signal so first you need to understand that what signal you need to generate point 1 number 1 second point is when to generate that that means with respect to timing i am talking about right so whenever i am executing one instruction various control signals will be generated right see pc out mar in this that r1 out y in mdr out select y r1 in z out these are what these are signals our aim is to generate this signal we will generate this signal for whom whenever this instruction is executed so when this instruction is executed we need to generate all of this control signal that we understand but only generating this signal will not help me i need to generate these signals in a proper sequence what does it mean that in step number 1 we will be generating these signals in step number 2 this signal has to be generated in step number 3 this signal need to be generated right so see we know in our engineering career we need to study so many subjects we know that that means these are the signals we need to generate but whenever you are there in fourth sem or sixth sem that time you need to generate you need to study these subjects this subjects in another uh, semester this in another semester as a whole you will complete your btech career right btech engineering study will be completed in this seven steps just i am trying to make one analogy of this right so basically what i wanted to tell our aim is to generate these signals who will generate that signal my hardware control unit will generate that signal how it is going to generate that signal based on some hardware they will be connected through wires and they will generate the signal so see obviously your hardware will give me some signal but that hardware need to be driven by some logic that logic will come from where it will come from the first one is which instruction you are executing if this is the instruction and if you are in step number 3 then generate so and so signal if this is the instruction you are in step number 6 then generate so and so signal that means what we will be generating the signal guided by which instruction and what is the step number basic these two things are required whenever we are generating a signal apart from this some other factors will also come i will discuss that right so hardware uh, in this type of control unit design what we will do we will use a number of combinational and sequential circuits uh, combinational is your some and gate or gate and all 
then sequential circuits some flip flops decoder encoder and other digital circuits will be used and they will be connected via wires and then they will be working for us to generate the control signals so for cu2 perform uh, perform is a function it has some inputs it requires some input based on the input it will determine the state of the system that means what it has to do output and outputs that allows it to control the behavior of the system that means it will generate various control signal and that signal generation will control the behavior of the system so see here this input is very very important so in last slide only i was telling you we will generate the particular signal provided we are in this particular instruction provided we are in this step number then only so and so signals will be generated right so this one as well as this step number both determines the state of the system and then we output a particular signal that signal governs the behavior of the system so see whatever are the inputs are nothing but called as the external specification of the control unit means control unit what are the input requirements are there that is nothing but external specification internally the cu must have some logic to perform its sequencing and execution function right internally taking its input it will apply some logic and it will do the required job so see yeah, our block diagram of your hardware control unit is this one this particular block is responsible for generating the signals this run and end these are new signals i'll explain what are they apart from that here all the signals are there that pc in pc out mar in mdr out mdr in wmfc then read write whatever signals we have seen so far all these signals are here these are generated by this particular block and now see this block is driven by four inputs you see one side is what which instruction you are executing and which instruction you are executing from where you will come to know by the contents of the instruction register instruction register content will be connected to the decoder decoder will tell me which instruction i am performing based on whatever see out of all these lines at a time only one line will be active that means i am executing this particular instruction then here your step decoder is there that will tell me in which step currently i am in step number 1 step number 2 3 4 we have seen the steps just in the last slide only so out of this all lines at a time only one particular line will be enabled say this particular line is enabled that means whenever i am executing this instruction and whenever i am in this particular step that time based on this particular one if at all they are playing some role then i will be generating the signals so see if this is active this is active and if they are required then we'll see them so if this is active and this is active along with them we will determine the state and then accordingly will generate a control signal right so this is at upper level at right now i am talking i will explain this encoder how it is working with a small example then again i'll come back to this diagram so these inputs are there again i'll come back to this so see first what i am trying to explain how a small means what it means one uh, one particular control signal how i am going to generate that i will try that i will explain so here as example i have taken jadin so see in uh, right now what you see till now whatever i have said from that we have understood that to generate a signal my first input is what is the instruction i am executing second part is in which step currently i am in based on that my signal generation comes into play so see if i know this thing then how i am going to generate the signal that i will elaborate so what i will do see in your instruction set because see the control unit will generate control signal for all the instructions execution whatever instructions are supported by your instruction set architecture so i need to consider for all the instruction so see what i need to do for in my instruction set whatever number of instructions are there for each of them i will write the control sequence hope you know what is control sequence that pc out mar in read select for add add in whatever steps we have written as a collection we call it as a control sequence so we will write control sequence for all the instruction 
supported by your instruction set architecture right then second one is then we will find out in which particular instruction the particular signal that i am trying to design that i am trying to generate is appearing that i will first find out and then i will find out the step number in which step it is coming for that particular instruction right so see first job is you write the control sequence and then you find out where that signal is appearing you mark it and then say in jadin signal is appearing in the sixth step of the instruction add r3 comma r1 right it means jadin signal is uh, jadin signal need to be generated for the step number 6 because step number 6 it is active of what add instruction like that we will see other cases also suppose you have written jump instruction then jadin is generated in the step number 4 that means what for this instruction as well as for this instruction i need to what i need to generate the jadin signal so see before explaining further first let me show you the control sequence for this instruction so see we have written the control sequence for this instruction control sequence i am right now not going to explain because already you know how to write the control sequence right so control sequence is written and then we will try to find out where jadin is appearing here it is coming as well as here it is coming so we have marked it like that for other instruction also we will do the same so like jump l1 right so here also we have seen jadin is appearing at these two places right so this we will mark then this one is another instruction branch less than 0 right so here also in step number 1 it is coming other steps also we have seen here also it is coming right so that means here see i am not right not going to write the control sequence for all the instructions what i have done i have written just for an example for three instructions so what you are supposed to do is you write the control sequence for all the instructions and then find out where it is appearing and then you combine the step number and the instruction together because for this instruction in this step the signal is active for this instruction in this step it is active so these are all what these are the various options where the signal is active so here also i either here or here that means what we will be applying what logical or operation so now see again i'll go back and i'll show you because signal generation we have seen then see in the sixth step we have done for this instruction and for jump instruction in the fourth step so see what will be the logic function logic function will be or of some and terms what is ended two things will be ended which instruction and what is the step number so for add instruction in step number 6 in jump instruction in step number 4 like that all other possibilities are there because here i have not written the control sequence for all the instructions so plus dot dot is indicating all other possibilities that means for all other instructions wherever it is active that i am trying to mean here this is one case right another one is what we have seen the jadin signal is required for every instruction in step number 1 because every instruction has to be brought from memory that is fetch whenever we are fetching instruction from memory that time we were incrementing pc so jadin is required there so during the fetch phase of any instruction any means what for all instructions irrespective of means i am not going to see what is the opcode and all i know that for every instruction this is going to happen so in the step number 1 so this time the complete expression for jadin will be jadin equal to t1 plus why only t1 because it is applicable to all the instruction so t1 dot 1 actually one means what t1 dot 1 is what t1 so if at all you are in step number 1 for any instruction jadin signal will be generated if you are in step number 6 for add instruction then also jadin will be generated if you are in step number 4 for jump instruction then also jadin will be generated like this for all other possibilities uh, that dotted lines are indicated so it is very simple see in hardware control unit basically the summary is first you write the control sequence then find out the signal combine the instruction in the step number that will be the logic for the that particular signal another bigger point 
here i would like to conclude is if one signal is appearing 